What is going on guys? Britter here, back with more free code camp. And today we're gonna to be doing starting the learn typography by building a nutrition label lessons project. So let's get started. Alright, this is a preview of what we're gonna be building. So let's get into it. We've provided a basic HTML boilerplate for you. Create an H1 element within your body. And give it the text nutrition facts. Okay. Um, below your H1 element, add a P element with the text eight servings per container. Add a second P element serving size two third cup and then in parentheses I don't know if there's a space or not I guess we'll find out close that uh, your second P element should have the serving size two third there we go needed that space okay within your head element add a link element um, with the rel attribute, link rel attribute set to style sheet and the ref attribute set to styles dot, oh wait, not styles dot CSS. Um, just copy this, copy and paste and close. This will import the Open Sans font family with the font weight values 400, 700, 800. Also add a link element to your link your style. So link ref equals styles.css. I gotta close it. Uh, hold on. Both of your link elements. Okay. So rel style. All right, create a body selector and give it, I don't know if it needs the dot, font family open sans, the fallback of sans serif. And I don't think we need this. There we go. All right, the font is a bit small create an html selector set the font to have a size of 16 pixels that's not right font size okay wrap your h1 and p elements in a div element so div element give that div a class of label Close that and it said wrap the H1 and P element, so we're going to close it here. All right. Borders can be used to group and prioritize content. Create a dot label selector and give it the border set to two pixels solid black. All right, and now we got our border. Good use of white space can bring focus to important elements of your page and help guide your user's eyes through your text. Give your label selector a width set to 270 pixels. All right, looks better. Give your label selector a margin property set to 20 pixels auto and a padding Property set to zero, seven pixels. If you inspect your label element with your browser developer tools, you may notice that it's actually 288 pixels wide instead of 270. This is because by default, the browser includes the border and padding when determining an element's size. To solve this, reset the box model by creating a star selector 
and giving it a box sizing of border box. Remember that the use of H1 and H2 and similar tags determine the semantic structure of your HTML. However, you can adjust the CSS of these elements to control the visual flow and hierarchy. Create an H1 rule and set the font weight to 800. This makes your, this will make your H1 text bolder, which it did. Give your H1 selector a text align center. All right, that was a slight change because it's already kind of close, but it did it. Fine tune the placement of your H1 by giving it a top and bottom margin, margin of negative four pigs, negative four, zero, negative four, zero. And I think we have to do pigs after all that. I don't think that's right. Negative, oh, because I don't need to do it twice. So, like that. Like that. Okay. Create a P selector and remove all margins. So, P margins zero. Okay, lines can help separate and group important content, especially when space is limited. Create a div element below your h1 element. And give it a class divider. Div class divider. Um, okay. Create a selector for your new divider, dot divider, and set the border bottom to one pick solid, 888.99. Also give it a top and bottom margin of two picks. Margin, two picks, two picks. There should not have any left or right margin, so then that should be zero. Okay. The letter spacing property can be used to adjust the space between each character of text and an element. So give your H1 selector a letter spacing property set to 0 0.15 pixels to space them out a bit. Nutrition labels have a lot of bold text to draw attention to important information. Rather than targeting each element that needs to be bold, it is more efficient to use a class to apply the bold styling to every element. Give your second P element a class attribute set to bold. Second P element class equals bold. Your new class does not have any styling yet. Create a dot bold selector. Dot bold selector and give it a font weight set to 800 and there you can see our serving size got bolded oh wait go ahead and remove the font weight property from your h1 selector as well so i gotta take that out okay give your h1 element a class equal to bold and then it's bold again horizontal spacing between equally important elements can increase the readability of your text wrap the text two-third cup and a span element Now we can add the horizontal spacing using flex in your P selector. Add a display flex and a justify content set to space between. There we go. Nice. 
Wrap everything with the dot label element in a new header. In a new header element. So, header, and then No, that's not right. It should just go. That ain't right either. Cause that completely transformed it. Your header element should be within your dot. It says wrap everything within in a new header element. So where is it supposed to be? Header. with the dot label selector. I would think that would be here and here, but that didn't do anything. So let's take this out. Unless it's here. That's what it is. There we go. Now update your H1 selector to be header H1 to specifically target header H1 to target your new element. Create a new div element below your header element and give it a class attribute set to div divider large. So div class equals divider large. Okay, now create a new dot large selector and give it a height property of 10 pixels and also create dot large dot medium selector and set that to background color black. Okay. You may notice there is still a small border at the bottom of your dot large element. To reset this, give your large medium selector a border property border zero. Note the medium class will be utilized later. Okay. Set a, create a new div below your large. And give it a class of calories dash info. Within your calories dot info, create a div element. Give it a div element a class of left container okay within the newly created development make an h2 element with the text amount per serving give the h2 element a class equal to bold small text. So we see a put amount per serving. Now what are we going to do to it? The rim unit stands for root em and is relative to the font size of the HTML element. Create a dot small text selector. Set the font size to 0 0.85 rem which would calculate to roughly 13.6 picks. Remember that you set your HTML to have a font size of 16 picks. All right, create a calories info HT selector and remove all margins. I think it's supposed to be margin. Dot calories calories info comma 
dot calories info H2. Margin, oh, set to zero. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Below your dot small text element, P element, element, small text, create a P element with the text calories also below the left container element create a new span element with the text 230 below your left container element within your dot calories info Wait, what? Oh, span with the text 230. Ah, I see. Span two thirty. Get rid of this first. Amount per serving. Nope. Your span element should come after your dot left container element. So let's cut this out. Oh my gosh, come on. Cut. I don't think that's right, but maybe it is. Makes sense that would be there. Your span element should come after your dot left container. Let your small text element create a new P element within the text with the text calories. Also below the left container element. Create a new span element with the text left container span still not right. Your span element should have the text 230. It does have the text 230. Should come after your left container. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. All right. Um, create a new calories.info selector dot calories slash info selector and give it a display set to flex a justify content set to space between and align items set to flex end there we go um, create a new dot left container P element, P selector, setting the top and bottom margin to negative five pixels and the left and right to negative two pixels. Font size to 2EM, font weight to 700. There we go. Nice. Create a dot calories info span selector and set its font size. Dot calories info span font size to 2.4 em font weight to 700. All right, all right, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here. We're at the 20 minute mark, um, and there's no way we're gonna do this whole one in a video that's not super long but i want to thank you guys for hanging out we'll finish this on the next episode and i will see you guys then goodbye